Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman, a software engineer, security researcher, and technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Today, I'm going to teach you the mechanics behind mutation-based cross-site scripting attacks to the point at which you should be able to go out and make use of mutation-based cross-site scripting attacks to win bug bounties and test your own applications. So when we're talking about mutation-based cross-site scripting attacks, we're talking about a subset of cross-site scripting attacks. And in order to talk about that, we need to talk a little bit about what cross-site scripting is. Well, if you've seen my prior videos, I've done a video on reflected cross-site scripting, I've done video on stored cross-site scripting, and DOM cross-site scripting. And in all of these examples, at the core, the cross-site scripting component is that a malicious actor, typically a hacker, was able to inject JavaScript code that would execute on a web page on behalf of another user. So it would violate the agreement between the user and the web page in which only the web page and the user should be able to execute code. No third party should be able to execute code on that user's device in JavaScript. So mutation-based XSS attacks are a bit weird. And I think the best place to start is this paper, MXSS attacks attacking well-secured web applications by using inner HTML mutations. Now this paper is written by Mario Hendrick, who is an expert on cross-site scripting. He is a fantastic security researcher, and I've had the opportunity to work with him many times in the past, and uh, would definitely suggest reading his paper because it is really the foremost source of learning about mutation-based cross-site scripting attacks. So once again, the paper is called Attacking Well-Secured web applications by using inner HTML mutations. And what this paper suggests is that there's another type of cross-site scripting attack. And this cross-site scripting attack is not based on the raw payloads themselves, but based on the fact that the browser DOM tries to reformat payloads that are invalid to become valid. And not just the browser DOM, this isn't just HTML, but this is also going to occur inside of XML and even inside of SVG. Now, just as a side note, it's important to note that SVG is a subset of the XML spec, and HTML is also a subset of the XML spec. So there's a lot of similarities that you'll find when you're parsing SVG, or you're parsing HTML, or you're parsing XML. OK, so we know that mutation-based XSS occurs when a browser tries to take invalid nodes and turn them into valid nodes. Let's look at the most famous case of mutation-based XSS. This is mutation-based XSS in Google search. Yeah, someone was able to find a valid cross-site scripting payload in the front page of Google search that millions and millions of people were using on a daily basis. So it says in September 26 of 2018, one of the developers working on the closure library created a commit that removed part of the input sanitization inside of Google search. In February 2019, a security researcher, Masato, discovered this vulnerability and reported it to Google. It was fixed pretty rapidly, but what we're here for is to see how did it actually happen. So in order to see how it happens, this author says, how does the browser interpret invalid HTML? And he gives two examples, example A, example B. And basically what he's showing is these are both invalid HTML. In this case, there's an opening div, but no closing div. And this is valid. It looks a little bit funny because the title attribute has some HTML in it, but that doesn't actually matter because these are just characters and they can be a string. However, when he tries to load this invalid HTML into the DOM, you'll notice that the div tag is actually closed. Likewise, down here, we have a script tag, an opening div tag, a title attribute pointing to a script tag, and then some closing attributes. Or not closing attributes, but a closing uh, quote to, to basically indicate that this script is a string, and this closes off the opening div tag. However, when you load this into the browser, what the browser is doing, this actually looks like it's pulling right here the script tag into the head of the page and it's actually closing it off as if it's a legitimate script tag. But 
right here, this is a script tag that opens into an opening div tag with an attribute that just happens to be a closing script tag. So taking this invalid, totally invalid HTML is turning it into what it assumes is the appropriate valid HTML. So this is a browser compatibility layer in order to help resolve issues in improperly formatted HTML. So Masato's proof of concept attack, which he used to attack Google search, is right here. And it relies on the no script tag. And when JavaScript is disabled, what happens is, well, basically nothing. The attribute right here, title, just points to a string, which is an image tag, but it's going to be interpreted as string, so nothing will happen. However, when he enables JavaScript, the browser says, oh, we need to reformat this into valid HTML. And by chance, when it reformats it, it ends up opening up the image tag and loading the image tag into the page with the invalid SRC, hence firing off the on error and allowing script execution to occur within Google search. So once again, what's going on here is Masato is providing invalid HTML, but by learning how the browser compatibility layer works for invalid HTML, he knows that this invalid HTML, the browser will try to convert it to valid HTML. And in some cases, that can lead to script execution that bypasses filtration. In other words, if you had a filtration system and you were trying to sanitize on the client and you looked at this and you said, okay, so we're not allowing any image tags that have on errors. You parse the elements, you find no image tags because right here there are no image tags. This is a string at this point in time. It's just a string and an attribute. So you pass it through. But then the browser tries to correct it, pulls it out of the string, pulls it in to its own element, and voila, you have script execution, script execution as a result of mutating the DOM in order to reformat incorrectly formatted DOM nodes.